It's good to be with you this morning as we wrap up our series on Jesus, who Jesus is. And I'm honored to be here to deliver one of my favorite parts of Jesus. And it's about him just being human and being a friend. I think oftentimes we, again, we make him too mystical. He's was here with us. He walked with us, talked with us. So here the, from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 12 through 15, and I know we are all, we are all familiar with this passage. <clears throat> My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, but to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business is. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask you to fill up this place with your spirit. We ask you to open up our minds and our hearts to the words that you are going to give me today. Lord, help me to be careful not to misinterpret what you want your people to hear. We thank you for your word. And of course, we thank you for your son. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. It would not be, you know, I, I need to do this because you guys were so receptive to it last week. I need to make a Star Trek reference. <laughs> and so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the best Star Trek movie ever, is where Spock died. And I know sitting in that theater in 1982, I was a little concerned that it was over. No more Star Trek. But what's more poignant about that is that Spock dying in that moment, Spock made a decision. The Enterprise was in trouble. Khan had set forth in motion Revenge against Kirk. The Enterprise was not far enough away to uh, withstand the blast radius, and Spock made a decision. And he went down to the engineering place and he went into that room and he took the thing off and he stuck his hand in there and, and got the main engines online and all of that. And then, of course, we knew when Kirk noticed that Spock was not there, they called him and said, Jim, you better get here. Get here now. So Kirk went down there and saw Spock in that chamber. Burns to his skin. Spock stood up proud as a Vulcan, got himself together. And he said to Kirk, Admiral, do not grieve. It is logical. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Spock in that moment decided that his life was expendable because it was going to save the lives of all of his crew members. He did what Jesus commanded in this passage. He gave himself up for his friends. Who is your best friend? I'm asking questions again today. Maybe you had more than one growing up. My friends in elementary school were my friends in elementary school. Then I had some different friends in junior high. Then high school, that's when things stuck. Because when you're high school friends, they see you at your best and at your worst. These same Motley crew of characters blow my phone up every Sunday when the Chiefs are on. 
or when they see something crazy in the world, they send me a meme. These same guys for 40 years. And I will tell you that this group of people, these men that I've grown up with, I would take that commandment. I would lay down my life for those men. A common verb for love in the Greek is philio. The word, is, the word for friend is philos. In the New Testament, a friend is immediately understood as one who loves. Even in romantic love, the basis of that love has to be friendship, correct? Don't we call our spouses our best friend? even though sometimes we don't act like it. But when the chips are down, your spouse, your partner, your mate is your best friend. What Jesus was actually talking about in this was kind of unprecedented because uh, we like to do lots of things with our friends, right? But laying down our life we can go tailgate. We can go roller skating, if people even do that anymore. We can do a lot of things with our friends, but laying down our life? Well, I don't know about that. That's a commitment. But Jesus was very matter-of-fact in it. And why? Because guess what? I'm about to do it. And I'm not about to do it just for you, but I'm about to do it for this entire world and generations and generations to come. What does friendship mean to you? Because, you know, sometimes friendship can be soul-sucking. You have that friend. We all have that friend that they take. And they take, and they take. And they never seem to give you anything back in return. Like when you text them, it takes them two days to text you. But if you don't text them back, they're blowing up your phone. How come you didn't call me? I texted you like 20 minutes ago. What's wrong with you? but yet they're still your friend. Because sometimes relationships are like that. Sometimes God has called you to be that friend because I need you to be there because no one else is going to be. And I can't leave them alone up to their own devices, so I need you to stand in that gap. Sometimes being a friend is a thankless job. When's the last time you thought of Jesus as your friend? Is that when you're in prayer by yourself or corporately, do you really think of Jesus as your friend? The person you can chop it up with, the person that you can tell anything to, regardless of how tragic or embarrassing it is. When? I want you to ask yourself that question. I want you to say the next time, God, Jesus, I got something I want to admit to you. I need to say this out loud to you. Right now, I need to shed myself of this burden I used to live in Detroit, Michigan. My pastor there, Haman Cross, did a whole series on praying. And one of the messages that he talked about is that we make praying a little too difficult. When we pray to God, it's a conversation because he's your friend. And when you have friends, 
That's what you do. You have conversations with your friends, hard, difficult conversations with your friends. Jesus was talking about an extreme level of intimacy with you and me. I can imagine his disciples. Wow, what conversations they had. Can you imagine? First of all, they're walking with Jesus. These 12 guys in sandals hanging out with the Savior of the world. What amazing conversation. Forget about what you read in the scriptures, but think about all those other times, those other moments when they were just talking about life. Talking about what they left behind to follow him. Probably saying, I miss my family. And he would have to comfort them and refocus them on the mission at hand. And I can imagine Jesus sharing his heart. Remember, he was a human being. There were times when he was fearful. He was, there were times that he did not want to do the things he had to do. He, there was trepidation, but he had to do his father's will. But it did not come without him emotionally bearing all of that. He experienced all the things we experienced. That's why it's important that we understand who he is. He is our friend. He feels all the emotions we feel. It is not lost on him that we struggle. That's why he wants us to trust him. Trust him with everything we are. Take a look at your friendships. Are they conditional? Do you have to set boundaries? We have to think about all these things in our life, but Jesus never thought about that. I'm your friend. I'm going to be your friend no matter what. I'm going to be your friend. I'm going to be such a friend that I'm going to hang on a cross and bleed to death for you. I've had the um, opportunity to bring a little, little AV into this sermon. Alex, I sent Alex a video late last night hoping that we could play it. Because sometimes God just, I can't just do a sermon and then all of a sudden God will, like at 12 o'clock at night, be like, I really need you to do this. It's kind of annoying. Because I thought I was done. Really? Okay. So, Alex, if you want to play this video, this is, let me set it up. This is from a, a show called The Chosen. Has anybody seen it? Really? All right. You should watch this show. I have watched this show and I have, I have weeped because I, I think I'm finally, finally seeing a depiction of what Jesus is supposed to be to us. This is Jesus being a friend to Mary Magdalene. Go ahead. It's not you. Quite a lot going on right now. So it's good to have you back. I don't know what to say. I don't require much. I'm I'm so ashamed. <laughs> you redeemed me and I just threw it all away. Well, that's not much of a redemption if it can be lost in a day, is it? Yeah. 
I owe you everything. But I just don't think I can do it. Do what? Live up to it. Repay you. How could I leave? How could I go back to the place I was? And I didn't even... I didn't even come back on my own. They had to come get me. I just can't live up to it. Well, that's true. <laughs> but you don't have to. I just want your heart. The Father just wants your heart. Give us that, which you already have. And the rest will come in time. Did you really think that you'd never struggle or sin again? I know how painful that moment was for you. I shouldn't. Someday. But not here. I'm just so sorry. Look up. <laughs> I can't. You can. Look at me. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> it's over. See, when you're in the darkest place, that's when your friends really come in handy. A friend. A friend that you can just lay it all down. There was so much in that scene. He said, what is redemption if it's, you lose it in a day? It's a process. It's something we have to work at. Jesus didn't show judgment in that scene because he's a friend that will you. He's a friend that won't keep score. He's a friend that will love you when you're the most unlovable, like Mary Magdalene in that scene. She also said, I didn't even come. They had to come get me and bring me back to you. Those are friends in action. I long to feel that presence of Jesus in those moments of vulnerability, in those moments where I know that I've messed up, oh God. And that's what I wanna feel, and that's what I take from this message to you today, that he wants to take you in his arms. He wants to embrace you in your darkest moments. He wants to be that friend, and moreover, he is that friend. And he will lay down his life for you. He already has. Again, again, let Jesus be the example of how we are supposed to move about in this world. How we are supposed to live out his love to the people we encounter. He's given us the blueprint. All we have to do is read it. Amen. <laughs>